What's going on, Mountaineer fans? Welcome to The Breakdown, where we break down App's upcoming opponent each and every week of the season. Up this week, we've got the Arkansas State Red Wolves. They come into the season, uh, excuse me, they come into the game one and six overall. Uh, their lone win was against uh, 1AA or FCS school Central Arkansas to start the season. So they have essentially been winless since. Um, they did, however, play to a five-point loss to M Memphis and a, only a one-point loss to the Ragin' Cajuns. So they do have the chance to put some scares into some people. But let's uh, take a look at them a little closer and see what they could bring into the game this Saturday. I also want to send a special shout-out to Mountaineer Works and Chad Mitchell. Uh, they, or he, more likely, uh, makes these uh, and other various designs that uh, App State fans and families and possibly friends would love to have uh, around their homes and offices. Uh, I got one here, one at work, and uh, my wife has got one at work as well. Uh, they're, they're very nice quality, very well done. Uh, I would highly recommend anyone who's looking for a, a cool gift, one of a kind type thing, uh, to reach out to them and uh, you know talk to Chad and see what what he can get done for you. I know he's a, a busy man, but uh, he does good work. He's a good person, uh, so I would highly recommend uh, reaching out to Mountaineer Works. You can find him find him on Facebook and Instagram and uh, see about getting your your loved one a a really cool holiday present. Uh, it will be hard to find anywhere else. Quarterback Lane Hatcher will be the starter this weekend. He's thrown for 12 touchdowns, but six interceptions on the year. He's a pretty good pocket passer. Uh, he doesn't look to be easily rattled. Uh, even with the INTs, you know, the interceptions, he seems composed when the next series starts. Uh, I think the way to get him most uncomfortable is to really break through the line, put him under some pressure early. Uh, if the line does protect him, he does have a great arm that can move the ball downfield in chunks, uh, especially when he gets it to his talented wide receivers. Uh, he isn't at all a scrambler, but he can use his feet when needed to pick up some yardage. Uh, I would say it's very similar to, you know, what we've seen from Chase Bryce. Um, nope, not going to electrify anything on the on the feet, but uh, he, he can get the job done when needed. You see kind of a breakdown in play here, and he scrambles a little bit to pick up the first down. And then running back Lincoln Perry has less than 50 rushing attempts on the season and only one touchdown. Uh, he's only one other running back has more than that and only by one attempt. So this is not a rushing team by any means. Uh, as you can see, he does catch out of the backfield, but this is a rarity even. Uh, they've only got three rushing touchdowns total for the team, and one of them's by the quarterback. You know, having said all that, Perry does have an average of 4.7 yards an attempt. Uh, it's likely because no one's really stacking the box. Teams are more worried about the pass. So he, he can have some success when he does see the runs. Wide receiver Corey Rucker leads the team with 602 yards and eight touchdowns. He's only six feet tall, actually, which is surprising because he plays seems to play much bigger. He's got a large wingspan and certainly helps him make catches downfield. This one's a little dump over the top and a uh, pretty easy score here. But we'll take a look at some of the other catches that are a little bit more impressive. This is a fade to the corner of the end zone. This is a deep pass, double covered, still gets into the end zone. A uh, little screen pass here, nice juke move. Continues to move the ball upfield even after the first tackle is missed. Another kind of screen look here. Again, juking, I don't know how many, six guys maybe there. Uh, and then the, it's another deep pass down the side a little bit there. There's the wingspan I was talking about. You know, he's not necessarily tall enough to make that grab, but made it look easy there. And then this one is a, a beautiful toe tap to get in bounds here. They did have to review this one, but obviously touchdown was correct call there. Then we have TCU transfer to Valence Hunt. Uh, he follows close behind Rucker with 585 yards and four touchdowns. He's actually the bigger of the two wide receivers at 6'3", uh, and you can kind of see that. Uh, I would say they, they look really similar in size altogether, but uh, both of them have great sets of hands, 
Uh, you can see why they continue to throw the ball as much as they do when you've got two targets that look like these guys running downfield. Um, again, both of them are pretty good about gaining some yardage after the catch, as you can see in some of these looks here. Again, that back corner fade. Again, Hatcher's, he's got the arm to get those things done. Beautiful toe tap to stay in bounds and get the touchdown there on that one. And then this was really, really a cool play. Uh, it was pretty bad tackling, but it, it looked cool uh, for him to kind of make it through a little, someone else referred to as a pinball machine that he was looking at. And then wide receiver Jeff Foreman. Uh, he isn't targeted nearly as often as the other two, but he does catch uh, a couple of deep balls, and he averages over 17 yards per catch. So not somebody you can totally leave away. He's kind of reminding me of Malik Williams uh, and how he can kind of sneak by before you even know what's going on. Uh, defensively, you want to keep an eye out for Kevon Bennett and Joe Osco uh, on the defensive line. Bennett's on the interior, while uh, Osco is coming in from the edge probably screwing up his name. His first name is Joe. Should probably just call him that. Uh, neither are the biggest at their position, but they do have a quick burst and they can have some success in beating their assignment to get off the play. Uh, there's Joe on a nice sack in the backfield there. And this is Caleb Bonner. He's one to look out for and helping the run, run the defense. Uh, comes up with a nice stop here on the goal line, plugging that gap and then allowing his teammates to come help him keep that guy out of the end zone there. And then Elderly Alexander and Anthony Switzer are likely the two best players on the defense from what I've seen. Uh, they both tackle well. They bring down and come on the blitz when needed. Uh, they're both safeties. They have a handful of pass breakups as well as two fumbles, two recoveries, and an interception on the season. Uh, I would say Bryce needs to take sure – Take, take a look and make sure he's got that open look uh, before throwing downfield. And then uh, the interception that we see here is actually a guy named Harris. Um, but they have two guys named Harris on the defense. I believe both of them have interception on the year. Uh, so again, uh, the secondary seems to be pretty quality. So now that we've taken a look at what Arkansas State can bring to the table, I think this is, yet again, another game where they've got some good players you need to watch out for, uh, especially the wide receiver position. Um, the, the quarterback's actually a pretty good quarterback as well. The problem is, just like a, a number of other teams we've seen this year, their offensive line is weak. Uh, so our defense should have success getting there, putting pressure. Uh, we will be one of the better defenses, if not the best defense that they will have gone up against so far this season. Uh, I don't see them putting up many points on the board. With the uh, wide receivers and quarterback as talented as they are, they certainly can gash you for some y large yardage if you allow them to get open. So uh, I think the secondary is going to be a very important factor in this one. Um, I think as far as us offensively, I think their secondary is probably their strongest point of their defense as well. But I do think our running game will have a lot of success uh, based off what we've seen um, through their defensive line. Uh, they have some players there, but I again, I've seen enough on film where they can be taken care of and the running backs have large holes to run through. I expect a lot more of that this weekend, especially if the weather continues to stay cold out there in Jonesboro. And I ultimately expect App to come away with yet, an, yet again another easy win. I don't know if it'll be as large of a victory as it was last week at homecoming against uh, the Warhawks. But uh, I do think App will still win comfortably. I'm going to say the Red Wolves end up with 10 points and App comes away with 34. So for those of you going to Jonesboro, be safe, have fun, cheer on the Apps. And as always, go Apps. Thank you.